Do you guys remember when Martin Sikonek was our top goal scorer a few years ago and he was considered the player I would be putting a lot of faith in? It feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? But when you realise it was only two, three seasons ago that we brought him in and he was the top goal scorer for us in the league, it feels like a completely different universe now. Admittedly, I wasn't paying him as much as Stone Gretz are, and I didn't get the value that they are getting. They wanted to send him out on loan so he can get some first team football. And suddenly, it feels like I've made a good decision. I've sold 14 million pounds worth of players, mind you, outside of Sikonet. And even though I let this guy go in a free, I definitely didn't do that for some other players. So let's go with the players we've signed and sold in the meantime. Ivan Savic has finally left the building. We sold him to Borussia Dortmund for £7 million. For a lot of last year, he was unhappy. I finally decided, you know what? I'm going to let him go. He's not got a cat for Serbia. We only paid £3.6 million in the end for his services. And the fact we got £7 million for his services from Dortmund is outstanding. And I think it's a great bit of business from our point of view. Admittedly, the person that we were placing with, the fans haven't really taken to yet, so I'm going to show you that person I brought in. I have brought in Oscar Eduardo Vajos as a centre back to replace Savic. Now, I will be honest, professional personality, great. He doesn't have a lot of potential, apparently. He was at one point just the three gold stars, so there's that. I don't think he's going to get much better, but we bought him for £1.7 million. So the fact we got £7 million for Savage and we were placing with this guy who I think is as good, if not better, is a good sign. Why he's played as a left winger, I don't know. But I think this guy is good. Yes, he's not really amazing for the role and the fans really haven't taken to him thinking he's not as good as Savage, which again, I can actually understand. But I think he's good. He's a left foot, his centre-back. He fits the role perfectly. And why not bring the guy in? His physicals are really good. Yes, he needs to work on some of his mentals and technical skills, but what he has is good enough for what I'm looking for right now. Even if he doesn't like some of the training. I've already talked about Angel Gunner being bought last time out. He's outstanding. And if you look at his start for us so far, he's got six goals in nine matches, five of the starts, four appearances have come for the bench. So he's done well for me so far. His average rating in the league is honestly a bit ridiculous, but there you go. He's a really good player. He also picked up an injury, but that's not something I'm concerned about. What might shock a few people is the fact I managed to get £2.7 million for Carlos Soler from Burnley. When they came in, he wanted to go, and I thought, you know what? If you're going to want to go, I'm not going to hold you hostage. He's 32. He turns 33 next year. I thought getting £2.7 million for him was really good. The wages they offer him is over two times the amount of money we're paying him, so it's good to get the money. Last year, he really was able to get a very good year from us, and we've now got him to the Premier League, so fair enough. I hope he does well for Burnley. A Burnley side that is predicted to finish bottom of the table, but he's their key player now, so I think that says a lot that he's their key player, but I think we're now better than Burnley as a result, so that's just me. I'm just going to say who now. I don't think Burnley's as good as us. Is that a good thing or a bad thing that I can just brag about that? They're in ninth place right now, so that's not like they're being terrible. But yes, Carlos Soler, 2.7 million pounds. That's a profit. But then some more things happened. Bado Sinovic is on loan from Brighton because we sold him to Brighton Hove Albion for 11 million pounds. 11.25 million pounds to be exact. And he was sent back on loan to us, so we're not paying any of his wages right now. And we got some future clauses in this contract too. So, that's a good deal. He's a perfectionist now. He is still a wonder kid, but this felt like a very bright move to make. And when we were offered the money and the loan back, I couldn't say no. It's our record fee that we received. And it broke the record that Van Fels has set as well. But the fact we got £11.25 million for this guy is great. Do I think he's going to get that potential? I have no idea, but the fact that Bryson sent him back on loan to us is potentially a sign of that. I need to double check how much we can get for him in the future, though. 
We will get three million pounds for his next international appearance, and we're going to get an extra 2.16 million pounds for the next two seasons for his services. So we've done well here, and we do get 20% of the profit made for his next transfer. So if they can get a good value, a good deal, that's great. We're not paying any of his 29,500 pounds a week, and he's got a five year contract. So as far as I'm concerned, this guy could be really good. And they have a lot of hope in him with these clauses in their contract. So if he gets anywhere close to those values, I'll be laughing personally. It's good to think that we potentially could see him do really well for us in the future and get us more money. Lucas Bagala has left us for PSV Eindhoven for a new record fee. Remember when I said that Valdo Silovic was the record fee received? Well, it got broken within the next couple of weeks. And within the next couple of days, to be fact, he signed for £12 million from PSV Eindhoven. And when you realise we signed him for just £700,000, you realise that this is an outstanding bit of business. He never did particularly well for us. So the fact we managed to get that much money from PSV Eindhoven, and at one point we could have got between £13.5 to £14 million from other clubs, but he turned it down. He was unhappy. I thought, you know what, you can leave. I don't want you to club anymore. Go away. And he left. So, Piers van Eindhoven are using him. And I think he's got two goals from the Champions League. I should double check that. No, that was for us. He played twice for us in the Champions League and got two goals. So, the bug helped us on his way out of the door. And then I sold the Dragon for £7 million to St. Etienne. There was no clause in this particular contract in the deal. I just wanted him gone. And he said... Why you not let me go? I said, okay, how much do you think you can be worth? He says 7 million. I said, okay, let's go for that. Sent Essien, brought him in. He did reject a few other teams, to be honest with you, that also hit the 7 million pound mark. So I kept my word. He didn't keep his word for a bit until he finally found a club that he wanted. Sent Essien, I paid him 29 grand a week. So should I be concerned? Probably not, but he's also 21. I don't think he's going to get much better, but the fact we managed to get another £7 million out of this is really good. And yes, the bug will get us good money. We are owed another £1.1 £1 .1 million for the next nine league appearances and an extra £1.1 .1 million for his next international appearance. And we're going to get an extra £2 million every single August for the next few years. So that's good. And we also get 20% of profit for the next sale. The Dragon, we don't get that, but I'm perfectly fine with that. We've done well either way. We do have two installments of £405,000 over the next year for Oscar Eduardo Vajos, but that's fine. We can do with that. We are also going to owe him 30% of profit for the next transfer, but again, I don't think it's a major concern. I also let Ben Sikonia out on loan to Zalikazag. I will be honest and say this. I definitely didn't plan on this deal happening, but they came in and said, we'll make him an important player and we can give him first in football. And I thought, you know what? He's a top flight player now. He can get better. If they can get in the football he needs to help him develop, which I really couldn't because I'm only using him for the bench, then that's perfect. They offered important player. So the fact they offered important player was the selling point to me. I was really happy to make this deal happen. I also bought Jos Luis on loan from Palmeiras. He is worth between 5.2 to 6 million pounds, but... His contract expires in the next couple of months, and I can approach to sign him whenever I want. So his loan deal with us ends on the 4th of December. His contract ends on the 31st of December. So we could attempt to approach to sign him now, but I want to make him want to like the club first before I can do that because he has no interest in joining us permanently right now. And also the agent has a fairly indifferent relationship with me, so... If I can get both the player and the agent on my side, that's great. We're literally paying 5.5 grand a month for his services and 85 pounds a week. So, personally, this feels like a no-brainer. He's a promising fullback who's got a lot of potential. If I can get it to sign for me permanently, that's great. But in the meantime, he's just helping us out with rotation and all that stuff. So, it'll be good. I must confess something to you, though. Salazar is now worth between 24 and 28 million pounds. I had two bids accepted for him by the board from Nice and Monaco. 
The Nice deal would have seen us potentially get 35 million pounds. The Monaco deal would have seen us potentially get 30 million pounds. I was okay with the Nice deal, but I went to the board and protested about the Monaco deal because of the lack of potential fees we'll get over time. The board ended up cancelling both offers for Salazar, so Salazar is still with us. He's one of my PSV Eindhoven and Feyenoord, but I brought a player in thinking that Salazar was going to go, and when Salazar didn't go, I still brought the guy in anyway. That guy's name is Christian Gonzalez. Now, he had been getting bids from the likes of Tottenham and Liverpool, but never really going anywhere. They never really went through with their bids in the end. I ended up signing this guy for £6.5 million. It is the most we've spent on a single player so far in any transaction. It is a risk to spend this money on this guy, but I think he's worth the outlay personally. Yes, he's not very fast with his acceleration. I do need to work on that. Yes, he's inconsistent, but I think he can do a good job for us in the circumstances. I also acknowledge he's not my starter, despite the fact that I promised him he'll be a regular player. But there you go. We've got a Petrucci in our hands to do good things. I like the look of him. And for £6.5 million, thinking Salazar was going to go, it made sense in my mind. We've also had a load of games since we last met before this guy even arrived, so let's go over them. The first game we had was against Swinski Mostar in the Champions League and we beat them 4-0. Kusawa gets the opening goal of the game. Forbes finds Haunek, he finds Belanta, he finds Nors and, well, Forbes scores to make it 2-0 inside 12 minutes. And inside the first 20 minutes, we make it 3. Kusawa finds Rijano, he finds Bogner, Bogner finds the back of the net. He's really good. Despite all the players we brought in, I'm content with my squad. And then we make it 4-0 before half-time. Forbes is able to get a goal from there. And that's a good finish from him. It is the best start we could have asked for. And we go into the second leg with a very healthy lead. The next game we had was against Uripes. And we went 1-0 down the game. We eventually won 3-1. After we considered this goal due to the Palmer skin that tapping goal. However, we equalised inside 23 minutes. Morris... He finds Hambalik, he finds Noel, Noel finds Forbes, his shot is blocked, but Bogner's there to equalise. A happy start. We then had a penalty, Bogner scored it, it's 2-1, and then we finish things off with our third. Hambalik gets tackled, but Belanta finds Wobledo, and Bogner finds the back of the net to complete his hat-trick. He is enjoying his start to the season so far. That's four goals already, and we beat Uipes 3-1. I rotate for the second leg against Swinski Mostar, having already won 4-0, and Below gets the opening goal. In a game, we would eventually win 6-0. Two minutes in, we're already 1-0 up, and then 40 minutes in, we make it 2. Salazar with the header to find the back of the net. And then, inside 35 minutes, we make it 3. Salazar with a delightful ball to find Ganev, who'd been aiming and shooting, and finally scoring his first goal of the game there. And inside 40 minutes, we make it for Churijano, finds Ganev, who gets his second of the game. He's now really starting to find his feet. And inside 75 minutes, we make it five. Konya finds Hambalik, he finds the Dragon, and the Dragon scores. These games are happy before all those transfers happened. But we make it six. Before the end, Hambalik plays across to find Ganev, who completes his hat trick. A very good start to our time in the Champions League. And we win 10-0 overall against Winsky Mostar. We then take on Depreseni and beat them 2-1. Salazar with a really good run. The player across the fine Bogner who opens the scoring for us inside 29 minutes. We double our lead in the 56th minute of the game. Sorigiano finds Forbes who plays across and it's deflected in by the teammate of Depreseni. An own goal there. We make it 2-1. We, we make it 2-0, sorry, because we make it 2-1, having gone to sleep a little bit here, and Ruiz gets in there first. A disappointing way to end the game, but we still won by two goals to one. The next game we had was against Chef Ray Cluj, and we beat them by five goals to one in the first leg of the Champions League. Torijano opens the scoring with that effort to make it 1-0, and he doubles our lead with his second of the game. 
Magador finds Forbes and Forbes plays across and Hambalik Torijano. What a well worked goal that is. We make it three not too long into the game. 29 minutes in, Hambalik cuts inside, shoots and scores. A nice finish there. However, they get a goal back. I think from a corner, Arena has a shot that is blocked and then they score. It is a disappointing way to end our clean sheet, but we made them pay for it. 46 minutes into the game, within the first bit of the second half, Garnev scores the first goal of the day for him. And then we make it five. Not too long afterwards, 51 minutes in. Bognes doesn't get there first. Boxe finds Bagador and Garnev doubles his tally. It's 5-1 and that's the score. What a day, what a result. We then took a Buskas Academia and we beat them 3-1. 12 minutes in, we took the lead. Garnev plays across to find Bognev. That's how good this lineup can be sometimes. Bogner doubles the lead though with the penalty inside 48 minutes. And then 48 minutes, 3 minutes into the second half, they get a goal back. Rigo plays it back to Bleme who scores. And we made them pay for it because we decide to get our third goal, get a two goal lead back. Garnev plays across and Bogner completes another hat trick. He's enjoying himself. And our homegrown talent from our academy might be our best goal scorer to date right now. Despite everything that's happened, Bogner's early season form is the reason why the Dragon and the Bug were both allowed to be sold. Between him and Garnev, we've got two very capable strikers so far this year, who are better than the Dragon and the Bug. We then took in Sheffield Clues in the second leg and beat them 3-1, where Bledo Finds Boxe. Boxe opens his account for the season with that effort. 1-0. We make it 2. Not too long afterwards. Robledo finds Bagador. He finds Robledo again. He finds the bug. And the bug scores his first of two goals in the game. Because we decide to be really good. Bugala finds Torijano. He finds Robledo. And Bugala is there again. It's 3-0 in the night. 8-1 overall. And that's that. A very comfortable performance. And despite this performance, we still sold the bug anyway because we had some really good offers come in. Why not? We then took him fan for us and beat them 4-1. Two minutes it took for us to take the lead. Boxe with the opening goal of the game to really set things rolling. We make it 2-0 with this effort here. Boxe finds Hambalek. Hambalek cuts inside, shoots and scores. A good, good finish. Van Faust do get a goal back, mind you, and they were thinking that they can do something with this effort. Issa with the finish, not our best work defensively, but okay, because we decided to make sure that they couldn't fight back. We got a goal immediately to double our lead again. Bogner, Van Baganev gets another goal. And then 60 minutes in, 59 minutes in, we make it for Ganev, cuts inside, shoots and scores. We're really finding some good players this year. And no matter who it is that's playing for us, we are enjoying ourselves in every competition. Buskas Academia was second last year, Fan Files were third last year, and they're both in Europe and doing well. And yet we're treating them like this. How about that, eh? We then went to Basel and we beat them 2-0. 30 minutes in, we're 1-0 up. Ganev's shot is blocked and Salazar opens the score in any way. And we never looked back from there. Bagadar finds his teammate here. Torijano plays across, finds Salazar, who doubles our lead and doubles his account for the evening. A 2 0 win against Basel in the first leg in Switzerland. In the second leg at home, we won 2 0. Torijano scores that penalty to open things up and then scored the free kick to complete the round to ensure that we would beat Basel. 4-0 over two legs. A very good time. And the last game we had before we met up was this 3-0 win against Vassas. We've won every single game to begin the year so far. Bogner opens the scoring with that effort. We make it to Bogner finds the top corner with that penalty. And then it's 3-0 before the end. Okay, okay, finds Konya. He finds Bogner. He finds Hambalik. Hambalik scores to make it free. A very good end to this derby. In a game we know we can win 9 times out of 10. As things stand in the league, we are top. With 15 points, we're the only team that's won every single game. Burnfar, who had a horrible time last year, have recovered. 
Aaron Farris are down in 11th place right now, so should I be concerned? Probably not, but Bogner has got 10 goals in the first five matches already. He might be winning the golden boot this year. I'm just going to say that here now. Don't be surprised if he enjoys himself in the league. And Halganev has already got three assists as well. So we've got a good team here. And I feel like we should be winning our fifth league title in a row. That being said, we've been given our draw for the Champions League. We've been given Bologna away, Rennes away, Liverpool at home, Juventus away, Torino at home, Betsitas at home, Bayern Munich away, and Porto at home. So not particularly easy, but not particularly difficult either in some regards. Bologna, I think we can get points against. Same with Rennes. Liverpool and Bayern Munich and Juventus, I'm not expecting points against. We can definitely beat Torino and Betsitas. And Porto's a game we can win, but may not win. So we could be in for a very interesting start to our Champions League and we could get to the next round for the first time ever. That being said, we are the only Hungarian team of the Champions League still, so no surprises there really. But there was something that happened as well. Van Ferris are in the Europa League this year. So they've managed to get through all the way to the league phase of the Europa League, which is very, very good. And they beat some decent teams along the way. They managed to beat Hapoel. Bersheva over two legs. They managed to beat Kabafi over two legs. They came back from behind against Nordjylland to beat them. And they beat Antwerp twice over two legs to get to the Europa League league phase. So that's good. They've been given Sevilla, Dinamo Kiev, PSV Eindhoven, CF Cluj, Genk, Fenerbahce, Apuel, and Kurabag. So those are some winnable games in there. And some other games that may not be winnable. But I think they could do well in the next round of the Europa League. And then you realise there's the Europa Conference League. Puskas Akademia have managed to get to the next round, which I was delighted about. We did lose one team along the way, however, unfortunately enough. And to be completely honest with you, I don't blame them for going out. They got given Lazio, so... Kisvada getting Lazio was a bit unfortunate, but let's be honest, they did well to get to the fourth quarter frame round in the first place. The fact they managed to get to the fourth quarter round round at all is a good enough sign as it is. And it was only Lazio being Lazio that stopped them. If they managed to get a result against Lazio, I would be very happy indeed. But they didn't, so it's not the end of the world. But Puskas Academia did get to the Conference League league phase. So we've got three Hungarian teams in the league phase of European competitions for the first time. I'm hoping this can continue. To get to the stage, they did have some easiest teams. I don't know who EB Stromer are, but they beat them comfortably. They beat Levski Sofia over two legs, and they beat Budut Lint over two legs as well. The fact we took Levski Sofia's best player might have helped in that regard, but that is still a really good result either way. To beat Budut Lint over two legs was even better. That was a team I thought they were strong against, so the fact they did that is great. They begin HJK, Andalet, Astromitos, Sovet, Shangwick Rovers, and Mulder. So. They should get through that, personally. That's just me being honest and saying that. If they don't go through, then something's gone wrong. So far, we've got 6.125 points in the coefficient chart. So, we're comfortably far ahead of a lot of nations. Because we got three different teams going all the way through the second qualifying round to get to the league phase is great. The fact we also had another team get to the fourth quarterfinal round before being knocked out is even better. So that's already why we've got so many points. And as things stand, we should be going up two places already. So we're already 1.5 points clear of Scotland going into the league phase, which is really, really good. We're only two points behind Croatia, which is great. Austria are losing a really good year as well. So they could be catchable this month. And... I'm a little surprised by how much we can potentially catch them. So, if we can get close to that, that's great. But so far, so good. Two places being gained. If we can catch Croatia this year, that's amazing. I don't expect it to happen, but it'll be nice if it could. And the reason I want to catch Croatia is I want to get a team in the Europa League playoffs straight off the bat and have two teams in the Europa League. So, if we can get 12th place, that's great. Even going up one position will help us get further into the Champions League. We'll go straight to the playoffs instead of having to qualify through the second qualifying round. So that's great. It means we lose 
an opportunity to get some more points early in the day. But we can just say we just need to play two games instead. So that's great regardless. Financially, we've now got thirty-three point three million pounds in the bank. We might have spent uh, extra bit of money to get our training facilities sorted out because why wouldn't I? We do need to do better with that, and the fact we managed to get all that money coming in, I decided, you know what? Let's do this. Let's get this facility sorted out, and we've done in six months' time. So, one more upgrade away before it's state-of-the-art facilities. I'm delighted. But yes, we spent eleven million pounds. We made forty million pounds. It is the biggest summer for our point of view in terms of transfers coming in and going out it's not the most we've ever spent in one season mind you that still belongs to two years ago when we spent all this money but we were very much being more patient with the way we're spending our money and because of you that 3.6 million pounds here was actually for next season anyway so if anything last year was the year we spent the most money over a season but the money we've spent on these players so far we've managed to make back whether we can do the same for Christian Gonzalez later down the line, I don't know. But I'd like to think we can, given his current value. So, who knows? We might be excited. Either way, what I'm going to be doing is ending this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys will like and share this video. And thank you for subscribing to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. But anyway, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.